Welcome to Lecture 3 of AccuPoints for Massage Therapists. This lecture will focus on the large intestine channel of Han Yang Ming. You'll notice that I call the channel the large intestine channel of Han Yang Ming, which tells us that this is the channel that is related to the Fu, the large intestine, and that it passes through the Yang Ming portion uh, of the body relating to the upper extremity. Let's start with a little review. First, we will look at the cutaneous regions. Right? Today, we'll be dealing with Yang Ming. Yes, unfortunately, we can't see Yang Ming of the, of the hand in this picture because it runs on the lateral aspect of the upper extremity, posterior lateral aspect, right, of the upper arm and forearm, covers the uh, lateral neck, the head and face, right, look at all the influence that this channel will exert on the head and face, right, covers uh, the pectoral region, right, the abdomen, the anterior lateral aspect of the lower extremity, and out to uh, the toes. Let's cover the other five cutaneous regions and then we will come back to, um, to Yang Ming. Okay. So Tai Yang related to the urinary bladder and small intestine covers the back of the body. Okay, we see, the, we see the back is covered here, and we see the uh, posterior portion of the arm out to the ulnar side of the little finger, yes, and of course the uh, buttocks, back of the leg, and uh, right out to the lateral side of the foot. Tai Yang, urinary bladder, and small intestine. Xiao Yang, we see related to the side of the body. Look at that. Okay, gallbladder is related to Xiao Yang, right out to kind of the fourth toe in the lower extremity. Yes, sides of the head belong to Xiao Yang, and the uh, posterior medial aspect of the forearm. Apologies, I keep losing my cursor, but it will come back. So Yang Ming we discussed. We can move down to Tai Yin, which we discussed uh, last week and in week one of our, of our sessions together, but the arm tie-in is related to the lung channel, so that would be the lung channel of arm tie-in, right? And leg tie-in related to the spleen, zong. Okay. Then we have xiao-yin related to the uh, anterior medial aspect of the arm. The center of the chest, right? This is Han Xiao Yin, is related to the heart channel, you know? And Foot Xiao Yin, related to the kidney channel, posterior medial aspect of the, of the leg and thigh, the lower extremity. And then we have Zhui Yin. Zhui Yin, the flank, the sides of the ribs, right? the middle part of the upper extremity on the anterior surface. Yes, and the medial lower extremity, medial thigh. Move slightly anterior if you move down the leg, as does the channel itself. Should say here that the cutaneous regions are not channels in and of themselves, but really broad surface areas that relate to 
the channels that pass along them and obviously relate to each other as do, as do all of the uh, channels and, um, and the Zong Fu, all the energy of the bodies are in a constant state of, of working towards balance and harmony, yes? And these are one way we do that. The cutaneous regions can explain why pathogens can enter the body and then move deeper to affect the Jing Luo or, or channels and collaterals. And, and eventually, if untreated, can get into the organ systems. But also the cutaneous regions can reflect deeper pathology. So if we see along one of these regions, uh, like a blue-green color, it's indicative of pain caused by uh, a deeper problem. Yes, if we see red, uh, wait a minute, so you can say the word that I'm thinking of. If I say we see red along the channel, we can think of blank. That would be heat, yes. And if we see white showing up in these areas, we can look at uh, deficiency or cold related to the area associated with the cutaneous region. This drawing is from a manual of acupuncture by Peter Dedman and Mazen al Kafaji. I hope I said that right. We move along, right, to talking about reviewing the lung, which was uh, lecture two, right? Lung is a Zong organ, Zong Fei, F-E-I. Fei is the uh, pinion for uh, the concept in Chinese medicine of what we in the West call the lung, right? And notice we use capital letters when speaking about the organs in Chinese medicine or Asian medicine, because we're talking not just about the organ as we know it in the West, but this whole, this whole list of functions, right? It's a sphere of influence and it's a functional system, not just the organ as we view it in the West. In China or in Chinese, it's Fei. Here in the West, we call it the lung. Good to know that though, because when you talk about Fei, it, it wakes you up to the idea that we're not just talking about the lungs themselves, but all of the functions and uh, attributes and spheres of influence that are related to the lung. So the lung has five principal functions, governing qi and controlling respiration, controlling disseminating and descending, or descending and dispersing, yes. Regulating the water passages, controlling the skin and body hair, and the opening into the nose. Okay. As a result of these functions, we're gonna see a lot of the actions of the points on the lung channel. Okay. Regulating perspiration, regulating movement of chi, controlling respiration. As well, any channel is going to have a local effect on the, on the area of the body that it passes over or connects to. So it can have a distal effect as well. Primary points, or the, the points that we've discussed, the lung channel of hand tying in, the entry point where the channel with the the entry point is where the energy of the channel is first accessible. So lung one is the entry point of the lung channel of hand tie in. The exit point where the energy leaves the channel and joins with um, its paired channel is lung seven. The cheek cleft point, lung six. The Yuan source point, lung nine. And then we have our antique or transporting points, the shoe points. Our Jing well point, lung 11. Ying spring point, lung 10. Shoe stream point, lung nine. 
Think about what we talked about with the shoe stream points on the yin channels in week one. Right? Shoe stream points on the yin channels are also the yuan source points. So yeah, lung nine and lung nine. Okay. So on yin channels, the shoe stream point is also the yuan source point. Okay. The Jing River point, lung eight, and the Hussey point, lung five. You'll notice that each one of these transporting points, these antique points, has an element associated with them. On all the yin channels, the Jing well point at the extremity of the channel is going to be wood. And then as we move up, we follow the cycle of creation till we get to the Hussey point, which is water. On the Yang channels, we're going to start on the Jing well points on the extremity with metal and move up. So metal, water, wood, fire, and earth as the Hussey point on the Yang channels. These are significant because they offer us an opportunity for a, another approach to treatment. By treating the elemental points, by using acupressure, acupuncture, right? We can stimulate these elemental energies in support of a deficiency or in order to drain an excess from one channel to another. We'll talk more about that when we're in the lab section of our class, when we meet. Our low point, as we mentioned earlier, the connecting point is lung seven. The front moo point is lung one. And the back shoe point, all of the back shoe points are on the urinary bladder channel. The back shoe point of the lung channel of Han Tai Yin is urinary bladder 13. And you'll learn where that is when we study the urinary bladder channel. So here's a quick look at the channel pathway itself of lung channel of Han Tai Yin. Okay, the channel starts in the abdomen. You can see it dips down to connect with its internally externally paired organ, the large intestine next to the large intestine, right? Curves around and ascends the abdomen, passing through the diaphragm, connecting with the lungs. Yes, ascending to the middle of the throat, which is why there are points on the channel that deal with dry, sore, scratchy throat. Would make sense, yeah. And from there, the channel actually splits. Remember that all these channels are bilateral, meaning that they're on both sides of the bodies, of the body. So we run from here obliquely, crossing the clavicle and moving out to lung one, which is six sun lateral to the anterior midline in the first intercostal space, which is the space between the first and second ribs. It moves up to lung two and then down the medial portion of the upper arm and it moves out to the uh, lateral side, it really is the lateral, anterolateral side of the upper arm the whole way down pretty much. And then ends on the radial side of the thumb of lung 11. 